G'day everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the top 10 biggest AFL draft busts since 2000. Before we get into the top 10 list, let's just quickly go over the criteria for this list. So simply, the criteria for today's list is that 1. They must have been at least a top 10 pick. 2. A player must play less than 100 games. And 3. A player must be a fully retired player. I must elaborate on this point. This means that any current player who you think would be a pure draft bust, which I would probably agree with as well, plays like Paddy McCartan, Paddy Dow, I guess you could say, sorry Carlton fans, are not eligible for this video. Simply because they're still in the AFL and they still have an opportunity to change their careers, turn their careers around. So with that criteria all explained well, if you're going to enjoy today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, that'd be much appreciated. And let's get into my top 10 list. Kicking off today's video at number 10, and we have got Anthony Morabito, taken fourth overall in 2009. Morabito was scouted to be one of the most exciting midfielders in the 2009 draft, being a very tall, quick and powerful midfielder. As a Western Australian, he did stay in Western Australia as he was picked by the Dockers. With his excellent under-18s year and managing to make the under-18s All-Australian team, unfortunately it didn't translate to the AFL very nicely. After a somewhat decent first year, managing to play every single game for the Dockers, in pre-season for his upcoming second year, he'd unfortunately do his ACL, requiring a full knee reconstruction. Over the next four years, he'd unfortunately do his knee again twice meaning he'd go under the knife for two more knee reconstructions. Then he'd finally return to senior football after 1,369 days in the mid-2014 season. In 2015, he just could not crack into the first side, and then he was delisted at the end of the year. He was given another chance as he was redrafted in the 2016 rookie draft. However, he was delisted again after a concussion at the start of the 2016 season. Moving on to pick 9 for our biggest AFL draft bust since 2000, we have gone for Luke Molan, taken 9th overall in 2001. Having a draft bust at a high pick of pick 9 is quite hard to see, but since Molan did not play a single game for the club, this is why he is in today's video. With a bad pre-season in his debut year, he was sent back to the Sandrum Dragons to play more footy there and keep up his experience. This is where the injuries would start to kick in. He would break his leg in 2002, then in 2003 he would miss 5 weeks in the preseason with a cartilage tear, and then as soon as he returned he broke his collarbone. With a mixture of poor form and continuing injuries, he was then delisted at the end of 2003. He had another chance in 2004 as he was redrafted in the rookie draft. However, he failed to crack into the first side once again and was delisted. Now for number 8 on our list today and we have gone for Jimmy Tumpas taken 4th overall in the 2012 draft. Being drafted by Melbourne, he'd play for the Demons for 3 years, playing 14 games in his debut season, 4 in 2014 and 9 in 2015. During the 2015 trade period, he was traded to Port Adelaide for the 2016 season and only managed to play 8 games at Port. Two years later in 2018, he was delisted by the Port Adelaide Football Club. Overall, he played 37 games, kicking 7 goals. A very lackluster career, it is safe to say, for a 4th overall pick. Now for the 7th worst AFL draft bust since 2000, we have got Lawrence Anguin, taken at pick 7 in 2000. He didn't manage to play a single game for the Crows in 2001 and he was delisted after his debut season. He would take a year off in 2002 and would join back into the league 17th overall in the 2003 rookie draft being taken by Carlton. He'd then go over to Carlton and play over there for two seasons in 03 and 04. Then early on in the 2004 season, he arrived at a Carlton training under the influence of ecstasy. He would obviously then test positive to a drug test and was then delisted by the Blues. In sixth place for our biggest AFL draft bus since 2000, we have got Jared Pickett, taken at pick four in 2014. Being scouted as an electrifying game changer forward that could also play midfield, he failed to put his strengths to good use, as he managed not to play a single game for the Giants in two years. A change of environment was needed for Pickett, and it happened in the 2016 trade period as he was moved along to Carlton. He finally made his AFL debut at the opening round of the 2017 season against the Tigers. 
In 2017 and 2018, he played 17 games from the club and then was injured in late 2018. In the middle of next year, Goldman announced that Pickett had been delisted. Quite simply put, another top 5 pick who failed to live up to the billing. Coming in at 5th now in today's video and I have gone for Mitch Thorpe, taken 6 overall in 2006. He was the meat in the sandwich with being picked in between Travis Boak and Joel Selwood. And whilst playing for the Hawks for 3 years, he only managed to play 2 games and kick 1 goal. His debut seemed to be a promising performance against Richmond in round 15 in 2007. Then however, a mixture of poor form and injuries made him unavailable to play until round 2 2009 against Sydney. During the 09 season, he'd break his foot and he'd be ruled out for the rest of the year. Later that year, he would be delisted by the Hawks. He was eligible for the national draft and whilst he entered it, he was unable to be drafted by a club. He was a player that was highly hyped up by media and fans all across the country, but he simply was unable to deliver. Moving on now to number 4 on our list today and we have gone for Scott Gumbleton, taken second overall in 2006. Out of the draft class, he was truly a gifted key position player as he managed to produce his best craft in the centre half forward position. It would be Essendon that would take Gumbleton a pick two. However, his young and promising talent was unable to be executed and used as he was plagued by injury in his first three years. From 2007 to 2009, he only managed to play five games, which were all in his debut season. He'd returned to full fitness in 2010 and it seemed that he'd have a good season going on managing to play every single game up until round 18. In that round 18 game, he'd be ruled out for the rest of the season with broken ribs and a punctured lung. So for the next three years at Essendon, it'd be a mixture of injuries, poor form and playing games here and there. During the 2013 trade period, he was recruited by Fremantle, but that recruitment was short-lived. He didn't manage to play a single game for the Dockers and he announced his retirement at the end of the 2014 season. So managing to only play 35 games in 8 years of AFL footy, being plagued with poor form and injury, it's safe to say that Gumbleton was a draft bust, especially at pick 2. Coming in at 3rd now, we have another pick 2. This one, Jonathan O'Rourke, taking 2nd overall in 2012. O'Rourke was destined to be that next superstar franchise midfielder. He was an inside midfielder with a huge hunger for contested footy with great endurance and speed. So then he was picked second overall by the GWS Giants, which was their second year in the league. And he was truly added to the infamous list of the Giants' shameful draft picks. With being hampered by injuries with hamstring problems and a broken jaw, he had a delay in his AFL debut, finally managing to make it in round 16 against Crosstown rivals the Sydney Swans. He then get a bit more game time in 2014, playing 8 games, and then at the end of the season, he was traded to the Hawks. Over the next four years with the Hawks, he'd been plagued with inconsistency and problems with his hamstring. He was then delisted by the club at the end of 2018. So it truly looked like a player who initially had the talent, but in the end he was quite simply never worthy of the pick two, and he ends up third on today's list. Now for number two on our biggest AFL draft bust since 2000, and we have gone for Tim Walsh, taken fourth overall in 2002. Tim Walsh, alongside pick one Brendan Goddard, were scouted as the highest rated key forwards in the draft. Standing on a tall frame of 196cm, the Bulldogs decided to take a crack on him and at the time hopefully select a future key forward star. But for the next two years he simply failed to get a game. He finally made his debut in the 2005 season in a round 8 win over the Kangaroos, managing to kick a goal too. However this was the only game time that Tim Walsh would ever see in the AFL. He'd missed the remainder of the 2005 season to a finger injury, and he missed the whole 2006 season with a long-term leg injury. Media outlets were not giving up hope on Walsh, and they still described him as a good prospect as a future key forward. But unfortunately, at the end of the 2007 season, he was delisted by the Bulldogs. Walsh is high on the list today because he was a top 5 pick, who only managed to play one AFL game over 5 years. And now for number one on the biggest AFL draft bust since 2000. This is, in my opinion, the worst AFL draft bust who is retired. And it is Harley Bennell, taken second overall in 2010. 
Playing 88 games and kicking 98 goals in 10 years might not be the worst career possible for a second overall pick, but it was simply his off the field dramas that gave him the number one spot today. It was ranked very highly in the build up to the 2010 draft. After the under 18 championships, he'd walk away with the Lark medal, which is awarded to the best player of the tournament. He simply could not have had a better under 18 season, and he was drafted by the new then Gold Coast Suns at pick two. Bennell was highly known and scouted for his silky smooth ball skills and his endurance and speed on the wing, and could also kick forward. He'd make his AFL debut early on in round two 2011. Then that next week in round three, he was dropped for disciplinary reasons, and this was the start of his off-field dramas. Throughout 2011, he'd be in and out of the side. With the inclusion of missing a few compulsory training sessions, he managed to play 14 games and kick 14 goals in his debut year. His career seemed to be on the right track in 2012, as he would play all 22 games of the year. He'd finish the year with 25 goals, and he'd also finish in second place in the club's best and fairest award, obviously behind the GOAT, Gary Ablett. Then for the next three years, he'd play 15 games in each, and was producing some quite decent football. But problems arose again in 2015. He was dropped from the Suns team in May after drinking alcohol after a game, despite the team agreeing to avoid alcohol for the week. Then later in July, multiple tabloids exposed Bennell as he was caught with using cocaine. With then more alcohol problems later that year, he was then officially traded to the Frio Dockers in October. The trade just didn't seem to be successful in the long run, as then for the next four years, he only managed to play a total of two games with also having frustrating reoccurring injuries in his calf. The Dockers terminated his contract in the middle of 2019, and then he was invited to train with a number of clubs. The Demons decided to take the punt on him, and he was then recruited to the side in 2020. He got on to play five games for the Demons, one of them being against his former side of the Suns. Then that next year in 2021, he'd have some COVID fine issues being fined 50 grand for breaking protocols. After being unable to get a game in 2021, he would announce his retirement at the end of that year. So because of my criteria not having any current AFL players, Harley Bennell is number one on my list today. Being a second overall pick, you expect quite a lot from a player, but simply having a lot of off the field dramas and a mixture of injuries and poor form makes him top in our list today. So everybody, there is my top 10 list for the biggest AFL draft busts since 2000. I said multiple times in the video, but I'll quickly say it again. The criteria of this list did not allow to have any current AFL players, as it just seemed unjust and unfair, as they have the opportunity to rebuild their careers. Make sure to comment below and tell me who do you reckon I missed out. There's also by far a handful of other draft busts that I did leave out, but I just wanted to make it short and sweet with a top 10 list today. So if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. That'd be much appreciated. And I'll talk to you later, fellas. See you later.